Welcome to the Firewater Review, a podcast dedicated to whiskey reviews. On today's show, we will be reviewing a Lincoln Road Knob Creek pick called Lucky Seven. I am your host, Seth Brown. I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Aaron Cave. How's it going? It's going great. Uh, just like we were talking before the show, and I'm having a great night. Had Just had a nice big piece of coconut cream pie and washed it down with a little bit of Lucky Seven. And now here I am sitting with you, going to be talking about Lucky Seven. So I'm doing wonderful. How are you? I can't complain, man. Can't complain at all. Had a nice dinner. And like you, I'm washing it down with a newly opened Lucky Seven Knob Creek. I just opened it about 30 minutes ago. Nice. Well, I did uh, just open mine last night. So mine's fairly new, newly opened as well. Um oh. And by the way, happy Father's Day. Oh, yeah. Same to you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that was yesterday. So yep. that, that was uh, my Father's Day present, coconut cream pie. Nice. So, yes. Yeah, so are you going to be getting hints of coconut and sugar on the palate? Uh, who knows? We're, we'll find out here <laughs> shortly. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we've we've already done one Knob Creek. We did the Knob Creek. Uh, what was it? The 2000, 2001. Yeah, 2001 not so limited, limited edition, uh, which we were talking a little bit about that uh, prior to hit and record here. And, you know, there's, that is still sitting on quite a few shelves. And you know what? I got something actually I should, I should mention, because when we first did that release, uh, when we did the review, there was only three batches at the time. And now I think there's, they're up to five batches. Oh, that's so, right. Uh, yeah, they did yeah, release so, a couple more. Uh, that's the update. There's five batches out now, <laughs> and so very limited. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, and then now they're coming out with the Knob Creek 25th anniversary. So yes. I'll be looking forward to getting my hands on one of those and trying it and uh, maybe look for that on an upcoming show eventually. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm very gl- happy that they decided to take a Knob Creek and do it at fully barrel proof, not watering it down. Um, not happy about the price, but you know it is what it is. Well, you're paying for the extra proof now. No, oh, yeah, <laughs> let's tr- triple the price for uh, an extra three proof. <laughs> so yeah, I'll be interested to try it though. It, uh, you know, it, it's. That that would be creeping closer, a lot closer to some of the bookers, I think, mm-hmm. in that regard. So, as I mentioned, we have done a Knob Creek before. That was, I think, episode one, wasn't it? Yes. Yes, very first episode. Yeah. So, if uh, you have anything else to include as far as history or anything like that, feel free to do so. I don't know if you do or not. Um. Yeah, I go little few things just because uh you know when we reviewed the limited edition that that was a small batch not a single barrel right so um as we all know uh single barrels come from one single barrel they're not there's no blending of any other barrels to this so it is a one single barrel but the night the nice thing about this lucky seven is it's um actually aged 12 years so it's not your standard nine year. Most Knob Creeks are around nine years. That's what I like about net nowadays. Beam is starting to kind of let uh, stores pick the older years of their Knob Creek single barrels. So you're starting to see your 11, 12, 13. Uh, I've, I've got my hands on, I think, four different 15 year Knob Creek single barrels. Um, mm. It's it's really cool that they're starting to kind of let, let you pick the older uh, bourbons, but um, normally this the standard single barrel off the shelf. It's nine years. Uh, it's proofed at 120. So no matter, even if you go pick a pick a barrel, it's going to be 120. They don't let you do it at natural cash strength. So they always water it down to 120. Um, non chill filtered, uh, which is great. Um, so this was first released. Um, well, now Creeks their small batch was first released in 1992 and um, it's part of their small batch series, which also is, it also includes bookers, bakers, and basil Hayden. Um, but in 2010 is when they released the single barrel version. 
And after that, they actually, this was kind of like the first of their small batch releases that started to kind of expand. And they have done so far four, not including the limited edition, but four different variations of their Knob Creek. So they have the Knob Creek, the Knob Creek Single Barrel, then they have Knob Creek Smoked Maple, and then they also have their Knob Creek Rye. So, have you ever had the the uh, the maple? Uh, you know, I I have, and I wasn't a fan. It's it's just because I'm not really a big fan of flavored whiskeys. Yeah. Um, it was just a little too sweet for me. But I I could see where they're going with it. Um, I think it'd be a good mixer with something. Um, if you're trying to get kind of some kind of like a smoky sweetness to some kind of cocktail, yeah, I could see where it'd be good. But um. I, I tell you what, their their rye is really good. Yeah, no, uh, I've had I've had the rye. I've passed on the maple though a few times. Yeah, it's uh, the, the rye solid. It's a hundred. It's a hundred proof, and uh, they do a good good job with it. Um, I think I mentioned in the first show that the mash bill is seventy five percent corn, fifteen percent rye, and ten percent barley. Um, same as their standard beam or bookers or you know bakers it's it's all this same standard mash bill yeah um besides that i think that's about it you got anything to say yeah there was um the you kind of wonder because you they they announced i think was it last year or earlier this year that they were going to eventually remove the the nine-year age statement from these Mm-hmm. but they, I mean, they still sit on the shelves. I mean, it's not like you need to go out and clear the shelves for these things. I don't know when they're officially going to discontinue that, but. So um, they did take the age statement off the small batch, but I think they are going to continue keeping the Knob Creek single barrels nine years. Okay. Okay. Well, that makes much more sense. But then yeah. that also makes me wonder if they will go the way of, say like a, a four roses with their private barrel uh, program and not really allow much over nine years on those, it's, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's like how, how long can you continue having these private picks at 12 and 13 and you know, wow. that, that age range before you say, okay, we got to scale back a little bit. It's going to be no more than nine and a half years or something like that. Yeah, uh, my theory behind all that is uh, I, I think they someone was probably looking at a spreadsheet and realizing they had a lot of Knob Creek barrels over nine years and said, oh, shit, we need to probably <laughs> do something with these or they could potentially, I don't want to say go bad, but either be overoaked or not hit the right profile for, you know, either the small batch or not hit the profile for this, the regular off the shelf, um, you know, single barrel. And it, it, they could be not worth putting into a limited edition. So then you just got these old barrels that they're just sitting there, you know, losing, losing their lust. Yeah. So, um, then but, I just make uh, Knob Creek maple out of that. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Uh, 15 year Knob Creek maple. <laughs> What's the proof on that maple? Is it lower? Uh, it's 90. I think it's, it's either nine. Yeah, I think it's 90. I'm not a hundred percent. Um, actually, let me, let me see here. I might have it written down somewhere. Let's see. Knob Creek smoked maple. And it was actually introduced in 2013 and it's bottled at 90 proof. Okay. So, and the Knob Creek rye, uh, is a hundred proof and it was introduced um, 2012. So, okay. So when we were at the, uh, New Orleans bourbon festival, I overheard Booker, or I'm sorry, uh, Fred speaking to someone else in the hallway, uh, about trying to recreate the, the Booker's rye. So I wonder if they've come across, you know, a handful of, uh, Knob Creek, rye honey barrels you know that they that they be nice that they've set aside to try and recreate that i mean because i can't imagine they have more than one rye mash bill but then again it's beam they're huge so who knows mm-hmm. yeah 
But yeah, I, I kind of that kind of makes me wonder about that. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, yeah. To be continued. Exactly. Well, that's all I had, though. Anything else? Uh, I think that's it. All right. Looking forward to uh, sipping this and letting everyone know how I feel about it. Yep. Well, what do you say we take a quick break and do that and then come back? All right. Sounds good. All right. When we return, we will share our thoughts on Knob Creek Lucky 7. Welcome back, everybody. In the break, we have been sipping on some Knob Creek, which was a Lincoln Road package store and titled Lucky 7. So per usual format, I will let Aaron kick it off first with his review, and then I'll bring up the rear. All right. So um, we were just chatting at the break, and uh, to be honest, this is uh, really a different bourbon from the most of the Knob Creek single barrels that I have tried. Um, usually when, when I'm trying a Knob Creek single barrel, they come out with a, just a wonderful sweetness of caramel vanilla and uh, it has a nice like peanut brittle to it. Some nice cinnamon and pepper into it where this is a lot more for me earthier. It's just kind of, uh, Seth even said darker. It, it just has a darker feel to it, um, which is kind of, kind of neat. Um, I, it's a nice change of pace. Uh, on the nose, I, I do get hints of brown sugar and maple and a, just a little bit of caramel, but what really stands out is the pepper and the cinnamon. And then uh, I get little hints of uh, maybe pears or apples, but the, it's big on the oak and I get a lot of leather and tobacco in this. Um, and, and the oak is almost almost like a smoky oak. And on the palate, uh, it's 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 spicy. It's got a lot of pepper and a lot of cinnamon on the palate, uh, and then you just get right after that big spice, uh, just a little bit of hints of sweetness, which is like a brown sugar, uh, maybe a hint of sugared uh, nuts, like you would get at the fair, those roasted nuts with the sugar and spice on them. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you get nice hints of rye. And uh, then you get like a, it's almost like a dry oak. It's kind of dry. And then I get some cocoa and uh, big leather notes. And the finish is long. And it kind of sits with you, but it's it's a dry finish. It's a lot of oak, a lot of cinnamon, and uh, hints of maple and uh, leather. A lot of leather and tobacco in this all throughout for me. Um, like I said, it's not a normal pour of Knob Creek single barrel, but, um, I really like this. Um, it's, it's sometimes you're just in the, in the mood for that nice earthy, uh, oaky bourbon. And, and this is that it, and, uh, I gave it a 90. I really like it. Cool. Yeah, I, I'll agree with you. I mean, it, it is, it's, it's different. And as I mentioned before the break, I, I mine's only been open for 30 minutes. Uh, and I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'll go ahead and jump into my review, but I, I kind of feel like, and I think you even said this uh, either right after the break or during the break that, you know, you, you feel like it almost needs to set open for, you know, a few weeks to a month before mm-hmm. you really start to catch some of those flavors. And like I said, I'm, mine's been open for 30 minutes and uh, the nose for me, I mean, it was just like, it was singeing my nose hairs. Uh, it, it's got a ton of spice on the nose. I was getting a lot of big cinnamon aromas. Uh, but then there was the, as you mentioned, the leather, the citrus, the oak, uh, some black pepper, uh, caramel and nutmeg. Uh, the caramel helps to, to break up a little bit of that heat. Uh, but then when I revisited just 30 minutes later, you know, I am getting more, uh, more of those caramel aromas and some brown sugars that are, that are coming in there and kind of smoothing it out a little bit. So I was, I was glad to see just within 30 minutes being able to pick up a little bit more sweetness to it rather than just being a all out punch in the nose. Uh, the palate, like the nose, it packs a lot of heat, really 
just a bunch of it right up front. Uh, it's pretty dry. And, you know, just giving it a little chew after I first take a sip, I mean, just rubbing my tongue over my teeth and the sides of my mouth, I mean, it's just, it's super dry and there's, uh, you know, some tannins, a lot of tannins coming in there from the oak. Uh, you get a lot of the, the cinnamon, some red pepper flakes in there. It's really bold, really in your face. And uh, I mean, you hear people say it, there's no apologies. I mean, it's, it's just bam, it's there it, to me. I mean, it drinks every bit of 120 proof, if not a little bit more. It really reminds me of some of the the slightly higher proof bookers mm -hmm. that I've had. It's you know as you mentioned uh, that that I had mentioned in the break about it being darker, uh, you know, a, a heavier, like I said, just in your face, and that's what a lot of those bookers are. And uh, you know, this being Knob Creek, like you said, it's different from other Knob Creeks, and it kind of catches you off guard. So it's uh. It did kind of smooth out a little bit like the nose. I was getting more of the caramel, some uh, maybe even a little hint of cherry. There were some 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 fruits coming in there. Mm -hmm. And it was it, it, it's still that, that just that heat and that spice being in your face. I, I, I'm really interested in coming back to this after a few weeks and just seeing how it's changed and revisiting my notes. Uh, the finish is obviously very long. Uh, there's lots of black pepper. Uh, red pepper uh, that transitions pretty nicely actually into some uh, good tobacco and and eventually leather flavors uh, the fish the finish wasn't as dry as what I was expecting it to be especially with the palate being as dry as it was toward the end I was getting more of the, the caramel and some of the sweeter flavors coming back in there uh, it, it was nice I, like I said I think it just kind of caught me off guard a little bit uh, and I, I'm going to give this an 87 and a half just because I think the, the heat needs to mellow out a little bit, but it, I mean, I love the finish. I love the, the, uh, the, the leather and the tobacco and some of those darker flavors and notes that you pick up. I just, I need it to mellow out a little bit more. I think mm -hmm. pick up a little bit, a little bit less of the, the heat. Well, that brings it to an 88.75. That's still pretty good, man. So, yeah, that's what'd good. We, what'd we give the 2001 Knob Creek? I can't remember. Oh, yeah, I, I don't remember either. I, I want to say it was, it was around, like a, it was around. I think nine, it was around man. this. Say 87 or 88, Yeah, I think. Yeah, overall, man, I think this is good. I, I And again, I just, I want to see what it's like in, in a few weeks. Come yeah. back and, and revisit the score here. Yeah, I'm with you. I think I think it's going to open up really nicely over the next uh, month or two. You said yours. You opened yours last night. Last night, yeah. I mean, just in 30 minutes, I, I was able to pick up a little bit sweeter aromas on the nose than what I did just right after I first opened it. When I first opened it, I was like, "Good lord, what am I getting into?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most uh, single barrel knob creeks when you first open them and you pour them, it's just an overwhelming uh, peanut brittle nose for me. And then uh, when you dig into it, it's just, you know, super sweet up front. And just this, yeah, it caught me off guard yesterday too. And I was like, whoa, what, what's, <laughs> what, what is this? And, uh, but yeah, it's uh, for me, nice change of pace. I, uh, I, I do, and you got to think, you know, it is a 12-year bourbon. Um, I don't know where it was, which rick or where it was aged at, so it could have been on one of the higher floors, so it could have just, you know, got a lot of those wood tannins for, you know, being as old as it is. Yeah. It's it's definitely darker too than what mm -hmm. I remember some of the the other oh, yeah. single barrels too. I mean, I, that was it, that jumped out at me right right away as soon as I poured it. It had a really nice mouthfeel to it though. It was it was soft and creamy, um, but yeah, it was it it'll be interesting to see what this turns into. I I mean I don't know if you noticed uh, or if you read the birthday edition of the Zeppelin. Uh yeah yeah but, I did actually. Uh, yep. 
So I revisited the um, birthday bourbon that we reviewed, mm -hmm. and I gave that at 82. <laughs> you know, I, I was not a fan when I first opened it, and uh, it sat for about a month and a half to two months, and I went back and retried it, and I, I, I think I gave, gave, gave it like an 87 or an 88 on yeah. the Zeppelin. It's it's really good now. So it's, you know, after a couple of months, a little air, a little time, you know, it just, most of these just get better and better. Yeah. So on, um, on average, what would you say you typically leave a bottle open for? Um, um, and then, depends. and then keep it, keep it around. It really just depends on what it is. Like, um, like the Knob Creek single barrels, uh, they usually will last a couple months. Um, but I usually have a couple open at a time just to, I like to compare, um, the limited releases, like my, uh, like the old Forrester birthday, I'll I'll probably let sit for a year. I try to finish it within the year. Yeah. And then, like you know, on my birthday, if I get one that year, I'll open a new one, type thing. But yeah, I think like my like my Van Winkles, I they're just a couple pours here and there, so they've been open for a while. You know, anything limited, like really hard to find. It's you just to have that as like a special occasion pour type thing. And yeah, so I get, I get a couple of bottles that have been open for a couple of years, but usually if it's like something that's like a go-to, it doesn't last too terribly long. Yeah. About a month, maybe. Yeah. I'm kind of the same, same way. It, uh, I, I don't know. It comes and goes. I mean, with the limited edition stuff, I'm definitely the same way. I mean, I, my Van Winkle 20, Pappy 20 has been open for probably close to five years. Yeah. But it, you know, it stays in my office, so it never sees sunlight and mm -hmm. it's always sealed up tight. You know, if I know I'm not going to be having any of it for a while, I'll put a little, uh, pair of film around the, the top just to make sure. Yeah. It's one of those things that it, it's not my favorite thing in my entire collection, but it's also probably the hardest to find. And yeah. I, I, it's just one of those things you hate to finish it because you know, you'll never see another one. Or oh, yeah. the, the chances of seeing another one are pretty slim, especially nowadays with the way people hunt this stuff. But then, you know, the everyday drinkers, stuff that you make cocktails with, you know, I'll, depending on what I make and how many people are drinking out of it, it'll last for a week, two weeks. Uh, and then, you know, these barrel picks, there's some that I've had for a couple of years that I really, really enjoy. And it's the same thing. You like it so much, you, you hate to empty it. But then at the same time, mm -hmm. you're like, I, I need to empty it and move on to the next one. Yeah. So I, I, I get hung up sometimes. It's, I probably have more open than what I should have open, but I like to, to hop around too. I don't normally drink the same thing two nights in a row. It's pretty rare that I do that. Yeah. The only time I ever drink, the same thing two nights in a row. It's like usually that bottle is very close to being finished. And I'm like, I should probably just finish this tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just, you know, have a pour that night and then finish it the next night. But I also do a lot of like, I'll do, I'll pair, you know, I'll, I'll stick with the same distillery a night. Like if I grab like Buffalo Trace off the shelf, I'll, I'll have a pour of, you know, like a, Blanton's or something after that. I don't, I don't like to hop around from distillery to distillery. You yeah. know, I like to keep it in the same kind of profile for the night. Well, I think then too, that kind of helps familiarize yourself with that distillery and their flavor profiles. Mm -hmm. You know, you, then you start seeing the, the, not only the differences, but the, the similarities between the different offerings that they have. But yeah, hi, yeah. Hi, hop, hopping around. I don't know. I mean, I tend to hop around sometimes too. I don't always do that, but then there'll be, there'll be nights where you're like, you know, it'd be fun if I just did a mash bill number two lineup and just mm -hmm. have a small pour out of each one just for the heck of it. And then, you know, same with same thing with the, the Knob Creek, uh, private barrels, you know, pour two or three of those and try those and, and see just how different they are. And then, Oh, and I've done that. It's fun. And then the next night I'll drink something totally random, like a, a Jefferson's Reserve old rum cask, which is not like any of that. At yeah. All. <laughs> and it just confuses my palate. Yeah, you got to keep it on its game. I guess so. I guess so. 
Yeah, I had a night where I, I think I did like four or five different Knob Creek picks. It, it was it was a fun little experiment, I guess, because I mean it's a single barrel, so they're all different and they all have their own special, you know, little thing they got going for them. And uh, I think that I don't know if that was the night I did. I know I had I think I had two 15 years open. My brother had a 15 year open. We had a couple other older ones, and I think we tried them all all together. That was that was a good night. <laughs> Do you have a favorite Knob Creek that you've had? Um, I I do. I I I'm a little partial to it though because I help pick it. So it's, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, there's there's no bias there at all. Yeah, but just a little bias. But uh, no, um, there is three that I really stand out to me. Um, so. The barrel that we picked last year was a 13-year, seven months, and it actually sat probably for three or four months before it was actually barreled, so it's closer to 14 years, or bottled, so it's closer to 14 years. Um, That is a stellar pour. It is phenomenal, but I would say the best Knob Creek I have ever had. Jamie Ferris picked a 13-year, I want to say it was like two years ago. And I, I I think I've mentioned this on the show before. Um, I remember when I first poured that with my brother and we both took a sip and we just kind of like just looked at each other. And my brother was like, is that Booker's 25th? And I was like, oh, yes. yeah, I remember you talking about it, that. It yeah, is yeah. almost the exact same flavor profile as the Booker's 25th anniversary. It is phenomenal. One of the best. It is the best. Not Greek pour I've ever had and actually I think I did her that was my first review for the bourbon zeppelin I believe oh yeah I I, I that was my first uh, column in the bourbon zeppelin I did that uh did that pour and I I think I ranked it a 95 and I don't think I've ever ranked anything higher than that yeah uh, I've, I've had a blatant straight from the barrel that I ranked 95 and that at 95 and nothing's been higher than that. Oh. Like you said, there is no hundred, but I, I don't think there uh, is. Yeah. Those, those, that, that was, pro- that's probably one of my favorite bourbons. And I was lucky enough to pick up two bottles. I drank one and who knows when I'll open up that other one, but <laughs> waiting in the is, wings, it is a special pour for sure. Um, but the, the one that I helped pick that, that, that is a really good, I mean, 14 years and it is, oh man, it's peanut brittle and caramel and just honey and maple syrup. It's just, oh, it's so good. <laughs> so it's let's, everything you want in bourbon. Let's talk about the, the, the barrel picks. I know we've talked about it quite a bit on the show before, but, and we've done two Jamie Ferris picks now. Uh, we did the the Bernheim wheat whiskey, which was a, a seven year old pick from Jamie, and then the Knob Creek today, uh, and then you've done a, a couple of picks, a few picks yourself. So yeah, I've, I've uh, I think I've um, done about five or six, and actually July it'll probably be my seventh or eighth, maybe I don't know. Yeah, somewhere around there. But um, yeah, what do you want to know about them? Well, just letting people know, I mean, you and I have talked about it before, before and after shows and during the breaks and and things like that, but just about how to go about being able to pick a barrel and and the different ways you can get in to do that sort of thing as, as an individual or or partnering up with a, with a store. Yeah. Well, I've, I've been lucky enough, um, you know, here in Columbus, we have what's called the whiskey barrel society that, uh, uh, it was a group of guys that uh, created just, you know, a local group of bourbon enthusiasts got together and just started doing monthly meetings. And we did it at a local uh, bar slash restaurant and they do their own barrel picks. So when we started doing all of our meetings there, you know, we'd have 30 plus people coming in and, you know, ordering food, getting beers, then we could bring in our own bottles and do our meetings. 
you know, seeing this abundance abundance of whiskey lovers, they approached us and said, hey, you know, if you ever want to go on any barrel selections with us, you guys can. So that's kind of how it first started out, being able to do some barrel selections through. So we were doing it through the restaurant slash bar. And then it went from there to one of the guys that helped start the Whiskey Barrel Society. He actually became a manager at um, the Cork and Bottle and Buttermilk, Kentucky. And um, with him being a manager, he does all their barrel selections. So it's like any anytime we we want to do a barrel pick, we just be like, oh, hey, can you get us in for this? And he'll, he'll set it up for us. Um, so the way to go about it really is to get in with either your local liquor store or whoever's, you know, picking a, around your area, either restaurants or a store or whatever, and just you know, get to know the manager, get to know the people and let them know that you're a whiskey lover. And if they, they ever need a hand or an extra person to do barrel selections, you know, just say you're, you're always available you know and you never know what's going to happen yeah I, I, they're they're fun i mean i think every urban enthusiast should be able to just try it at least once you know to take that bourbon straight from the barrel right to the glass is just phenomenal yeah yeah it's it's definitely something that i want to do uh, and need to do and should have probably done a long time ago but i, I you know you just you just haven't. I haven't. Uh, but there, there's. Yeah, I, I got a feeling you'll be doing one soon because I'm. My bucket list is a turkey pick, and it's it's going to happen probably within the next year or two. Yeah. So, and you'll be there for that. Yeah, I I definitely want to be, and we need to do that for Jimmy. Either hangs oh, yeah. it up or, or passes on. Let's hope neither of those happen anytime soon. But. Definitely want him to be around, and it would be oh, cool yeah. if if both he and Eddie could be around. But yeah, there's there's um, I mean, just talking to your your local store owner or store manager or whoever it is that that picks the barrels there, and you know, if you're in you know nowhere close to Kentucky, there's there are different ways that that you can do it. If you can't make it to Kentucky to actually be there to physically pick the barrel the way that these things happen is that they'll send them four or five 200 milliliter bottles of four or five different barrels. And you just go through those four or five different barrels and pick which one you like. Mm -hmm. So obviously you're not getting the experience that you would if you were at the distillery and you're probably getting half the amount of barrels that you would if you were actually there in person, but you're still being able to to pick what it is that that you want to to have a barrel of and then i you know i think some of the barrels that you guys have picked you have i guess in some cases split with either the restaurant or a store yes. so it's not mm -hmm. like you're having to cover the full price up front of what this barrel is yeah usually when we do a selection with like yeah it's the the restaurant that we go through is called gallows and it's usually they'll take you know either like half the barrel or maybe just you know 10 or 15 cases to you know just to serve at the restaurant and then the rest goes to us and you, you, we just distribute it throughout the group and um yeah, it's, it, it's it's pretty easy to get rid of all that and not have to worry about money you know yeah. someone paying for a whole barrel and not being able to right. cover it. So Yeah, because, it. I mean, being individuals, I mean, to my knowledge, you can't just outright buy a barrel. Yeah, it has to go through either, you know, some kind of distributor, liquor store or restaurant or bar or you know, something like that. Yeah, some some entity that has the, the appropriate licenses to be able to... Yeah procure a barrel and then subsequently sell that barrel. Yeah. Yeah. You just can't walk into Buffalo Trace and slap 10, 10 grand on the counter and say, Hey, I want to buy a barrel today. Wouldn't that be nice? It I would, mean, not that I have 10 grand be. just to throw down on a barrel, but it would be nice, but it, unfortunately it doesn't work that way. It's not the way the law works. 
Yeah, and it, it really it all depends on distillery, like how how their picks go. I, they're all completely different. Uh, and don't be afraid to, if you're at a, a pick and say you're with a group of people and no one really likes what you're trying, <laughs> say, hey, I don't like any of this. Yeah. But you got something else. Uh, that's that's how we landed on our 14-year Knob Creek. You know, they had went to Jim Beam. They had three barrels rolled out. We tried them all. They were all nine-year barrels. And we were like, none of these are really that great. And, I mean, they're good, but they're not great. That's not what we're looking for. Mm-hmm. And we were like, got anything else? And the guy's like, well, we got this older barrel if you want to try that. And we all tried it. We're like, that's what we want. That's it. <laughs> and that's it. He was like, well, this is a uh, 13 year, seven months. We're like, that's a score. So, uh, yeah, gotta ask, you know, it's, yeah, it's don't, settle. don't, yeah. Don't be afraid to, to turn them away. Cause I, I mean, I know that even some stores around me that have had samples, uh, shipped in, of course, even the samples come through distributors. Uh, and then you you then say, okay, I want this one or that one, and then it goes back to the distributor to the distillery. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then there's been a couple of stores that have actually sent samples back, saying that no, this none of these are fitting what we're what we're looking for or interested in. Please send us another batch of samples. Yeah. And I think in one case, the the rep actually got pretty ticked off, and I I don't. To me, I don't know why he would get kicked off, ticked off because I don't. He doesn't really have a horse in the game, you know. It's just yeah. hey, none of these met their profiles. I think he was probably ticked off just because, you know, it was creating more work for him or something. I don't know, yeah. or made him look bad or something. I don't know, but you know, it that that shouldn't be the case. I mean, you're trying to please the the person that is picking it, who is picking yeah. on behalf of the customers or you know the the members of a society. So you want to to have something that is going to help that store's business or that, that uh, group's business or w- whatever the case may be. So it's not, you know, it shouldn't be dependent on, on the rep. Yeah. Yeah. He's not the one spending 10 grand on a barrel. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. I mean, at that, at that point you're the messenger. And if a, a store is picking these and selling these bottles from this barrel, then you know, that, that's a chance to possibly gain a new customer. Mm-hmm. And then that store is going to be producing more revenue and ordering more bottles from you. So it's just, I, I, I didn't really get it when that particular store told me, yeah, the, the rep was really ticked off about it. And we didn't end up ordering the barrel because of the way the rep acted. So it kind of screwed himself in that case. But yeah, don't, don't be afraid. Pick what you like and don't settle. That's right. That's all I have for this. Yeah, that's all I got, too. Cool. So, well, this was an 88.7 overall. Pretty pretty solid pick. Yep. I enjoyed it. Um, well, where you can... you got anything? I oh, got, that's I, my... Yeah, my, I'm, I'm first. That's yeah, right. I got nothing so, else unless you want to give a few plugs and where folks can find you. Yeah, I'm at Bourbon Cave on Instagram and Twitter. I write... For the Bourbon Zeppelin, High Proof Single Barrel Bourbon Reviews. Also right for the Sons of Winston Churchill. You can always find me here on the Firewater Review. And check out Roundtable Woodworks. Chris is doing some amazing stuff with the barrels and Glen Cairns. And uh, Dirty Knees Soap. I just got actually a shipment in today. Nice. Uh, Minnesota wood and the uh rustic is it rustic country yeah rustic yep yes. rustic country uh, i wanted to try that one so i'm gonna give that a whirl nice so, and by the way for for our bearded listeners they are going to be coming out or maybe already have come out with i can't i don't know i don't have a beard i shaved mine uh with a beard oils and I think the nice. Minnesota wood is going to be once again the uh flagship uh not flavor, what would you call it? I guess scent. Uh, yes. For for that. So yeah, be on the lookout for Dirty Knees Beard Oil for our bearded listeners. I am Seth P. Brown on Instagram and Twitter. 
uh, do reviews for the Son of Winston Churchill. You can find those at sowchurchill.blogspot.com. And you can follow Son of Winston Churchill on Instagram. That is at Son of Winston Churchill. And you can find all of our shows on abvnetwork.com. You can find them in iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and YouTube. There is no video, audio only. You don't want to see our faces anyway. I'm sitting in a dark room in my basement, so there's not much to see. Yeah, me too. But that's it. Uh, we appreciate your reviews. Let us know what you want us to review. If you have any ideas or uh, whiskeys that we haven't reviewed on this show, uh, feel free to to DM us on Instagram yes. and uh, leave your feedback in iTunes. Let us know what you want us to review there, too. That would be cool. Or you can email us from the ABV Network website. We have a, a little contact form on there that you can fill out. And I am the recipient of those emails. So anything you send, I get. So let us know. We appreciate it. And I think uh, speaking of things we're going to be reviewing, I think on the next episode, we're going to be looking at Wild Turkey's Rare Breed. So be on the lookout for that, too. That's it for this episode. We appreciate you listening. Please drink responsibly. And until next time, cheers. Later. Water Review is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers.